It's May 6th and registration for summer 2020 MCAT test dates is opening tomorrow, May 7th. There is a good amount of information that I wanted to go through in this video and that's just because for some reason the AMC has scattered a lot of important information for students that they should know for summer 2020 MCAT test dates. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna be sharing a number of different links here. So first of all, registration is gonna be opening tomorrow sometime between 6 a.m. and noon Eastern time. So an important thing to know is for those of you who aren't on the East Coast, this is pretty early for you. So for example, if you're on the West Coast in California, this is 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific. So you're gonna to have to get up pretty early. Now, this is a pretty wide window, which is a little annoying from the AMC because you don't wanna just sit by your computer and refresh the page every five minutes as some people have commented down here. So something that might help is if you look historically at some of the tweets that the AMC has released when registration has opened fast, you'll find that it usually opens around 7 a.m. Eastern. So here is the post for last October for registration for spring 2020 test dates. The tweet went out at 7.21 a.m. And this is from February 2020 for summer test dates until everything got canceled. So this post was made at 7.12 a.m. So that means you can expect registration to likely open around 7 a.m. Something to note though, is that these tweets are a little delayed from when registration actually opens. So registration will likely open some time before this. Uh, the good news is that the AMC by saying 6 a.m. Eastern is probably letting students know that uh, the tweet may not be perfectly on time. So uh, rather than getting up at 7 a.m., I would definitely go with what the AMC has stated here, which is 6 a.m., and chances are it's going to open by 7 a.m. So make sure you wake up early. The next thing I want to talk about is some aspects of registration as well as test dates, and also a quick thing. So May 29th is going to run in some locations, but not all. So this we predicted to some degree that the AMC, even if they want to launch the MCAT, different states, different counties, different cities are essentially coming up with their own policies and rules. So this is something that you want to keep in mind of when you're selecting a testing center that you may not necessarily want to pick the closest testing center to you if you already know that that location has some policy that's going to keep that area shut down for an extended period beyond your test date. So just something to be careful about. Another thing is uh, in terms of the registration process, um, the times aren't necessarily going to be what we think they're going to be. So the AMC said that for the summer there's going to be three times, 6.30 a.m., 12.15 p.m., and 6 p.m., but they also said in some instances you may encounter appointments other than the three most common start times. In this case, for as an example, they listed four times, which includes this 1 p.m. slot, which is a little odd. My expectation actually is to see fewer of the 6 p.m. time slots and possibly some of the 6.30 a.m. time slots. The reason is that the piercing testing centers are all small businesses run by individuals. And I think it's kind of unlikely that every single Pearson center out there is going to have staff to be able to run the testing center from 5 a.m. in the morning all the way to 1 a.m. midnight. It's just hard finding staff just that can work those hours and, and be able to hire extra people just for a few days here and there. It's kind of odd. So I know some of you were looking forward to the 6 p.m. test date because you're thinking, oh, great, I can take this exam after work. But just note that not all of these test dates uh, may have 6 p.m. slots. And another thing you might want to be careful about is the Pearson Center's Generally, they run out office space in larger buildings, which means they don't own the space. And when you run out office space in a larger center, often they have 
uh, automations set in place in terms of when the doors lock, when the lights shut down, when the bathrooms lock. And you just want to make sure you don't get yourself in a situation where you're taking the exam at 6 p.m., everything is fine. And then you find out at uh, one of your breaks at 9 p.m. that the bathrooms are locked. So just something to be a little careful about. Um, but the main thing I would say is for the test dates and times tomorrow when registration opens, just be a little flexible. And if you want to be on the safer side and avoid any potential issues, I would say uh, the 12, 15 time slot would be the most ideal and anything close to 12, 15. Um, that being said, if a 6.30 a.m., 6 p.m. or other time slot is available and that works out better for you, then absolutely go for it. Uh, presumably, if that time is available at that testing center, it should be able to be held. And as long as you're not one, one of the first test dates, such as May 29th or one of the early June test dates, then if there are any issues, they should have already been resolved by the time you take your exam. Something else the AMC has also said is, they should be very well aware that their website is going to go crazy tomorrow when registration opens. It's similar to uh, not this past Friday, but the Friday before when they released a, an announcement about changes to the exam, the website crashed very quickly. So what they said is that there's going to be a waiting room in place. So if you get in early, you might be in a waiting room, but no problem. At least they should tell you that you're in a waiting, uh, well, you're in a line of some sort. Okay. Now, some other things about the actual changes to the exam. So, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, there was some issue with the CARS timing, which they have finally corrected. So, it wasn't 76 minutes like they showed before. Indeed, it's 81 minutes. The good thing now is for all four sections of the exam, there is no change in the pacing, right? You have the same number of minutes and seconds per question as you did for the normal version of the exam. Now, I've gotten some questions from students about some of these changes and they're concerned, for example, of, oh, if it's a short term exam, does that make it harder because every question you miss matters more? As it turns out, it actually doesn't matter. And that's because the AMC has specifically stated that the questions that they're removing are questions that are not scored. Right? So what they said is that for the cuts, the cuts will come from parts of the exam that don't impact source, such as some questions that are given uh, a test run. So what they mean by questions that are given a test run is the AMC does classify their questions as easy, medium, or hard. An easy question should be one that most students get right. A hard question should be one that high scoring students get correct and lower scoring students get incorrect. If they have any test questions that supposed to be hard but doesn't follow that trend, for example, lower scoring students are getting the questions right and higher scoring students are getting those questions wrong, then those are questions that they would want to toss. So uh, at the end of the day, what this means is that the fact that they made the exam shorter has no impact at all in terms of how your exam is being scored. If anything, it's just good because now you're not having your time wasted doing these test questions for the AMC that were never going to matter for your score anyways. Okay, another thing they mentioned is that there's going to be some other changes to the format of the exam. And if you look at the test date, you'll see that you jump immediately into the ChemPhys section. Usually there's two parts before this, the examinee agreement as well as the tutorial. Both of these have been taken out. So you can see here that the tutorial uh, as well as the end of the day survey has been removed and instead they're encouraging examinees to use practice with exam features, which is this interactive tool they have online for uh, getting used to the AMC's platform for the MCAT. For any of you who are studying for the MCAT, you should all be doing the AMC questions and you should have plenty of practice from the full length practice exams. But just so you know that there will not be a tutorial. The other thing is with the examinee agreement. Again, it's a little odd why I have all these links posted, but uh, I was able to find information here that the test day uh, certification statement has been temporarily removed from the seated portion of the exam. And so instead of doing it when you're sitting in front of your computer screen, it's just going to be part of the candidate rules agreement, which you'll review when you arrive at the testing center. So that means they'll be providing it to you on a sheet of paper. 
Okay, so those are most of the major changes that I wanted uh, to go through to provide you some more details about this shortened MCAT as well as how registration is going to work tomorrow. There's going to be additional videos that we're going to release uh, hopefully later this week. Uh, one of the videos is going to be about how to revise the way that you take your AMC practice exams. Again, you don't want to take your practice exams the format they are from the AMC because that's a seven and a half hour exam and now you're only taking a five and a five hour 45 minute exam. So we're going to release specific information for each exam, which questions you can skip so that way you end up with the same exact format for the shortened MCAT where you're only doing 48 sections for each question. Another thing we're going to release is a score estimator, which is for the AMC practice exams, if you're not only doing 48 questions out of the 59 questions, then of course your scores are all going to be super low. So we're going to come up with a new conversion chart uh, from the 48 questions you complete that can allow you to estimate what that means on a 118 to 132 point scale. So all that information should be really helpful. So please make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that way you will receive notifications when we release additional videos like this.